Well, those of you here in those days, those of you following from home. to try and move this to reduce the. I'm obviously going to have to be very still this morning. Let's give it a go. The Lord be with you. And also with you. So as we come to worship, let's pray together our bidding prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let's remember our imperfections in the sight of Almighty God. And let's give thanks.
that God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And we can confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we can say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now let's keep silence for a moment. And then we pray our special prayer, the collect, for this, the 10th. Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we'll have our first reading. No, th thank you, Derek. <laughs> A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbours, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you are marked with a seal on the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath, and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
And now the choir will sing for us our first hymn. If you're able, please stand. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him. Because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose mother and father we know? How can he now say, I am the bread, I came down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain about yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets. And they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father. Except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you. Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Before I give you the text for this morning, if you were with us either here or at home last Sunday and you think that the 
Holy Gospel sounds pretty familiar, it is pretty familiar. It follows immediately on. And in fact, the first verse was the last verse of uh, our Holy Gospel last week. So if you noticed that, brownie points. If you didn't, well, obviously you were thinking about something much more interesting than the sermon. So let's, let's of course we will not be uh, forgetting about the Jesus being the bread of life, but let's tr try a slightly different tack this week. The question that the, the Jews asked in a, pretty, in a pretty negative way, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph? They were acknowledging Jesus through his associations, through his family. And how often does that happen? You know, growing up on the farm, I was acknowledged for many years as being Bill Barker's lad. And at school, well, it wasn't quite so complimentary. It was one of those country bumpkins that went into the town centre grammar school. Yeah, but those were the associations. In a similar way, Ella is often greeted with the same, oh, you must be the vicar's wife. If I'm there, I always clarify and say I have the privilege to be the husband of Ella. And Ella sends her apologies, by the way. She's laid up with her back this morning. So that's why there's an empty chair in the choir. So, associations. Even in the best of relationships, to be defined in a way like this can be a bit belittling. You know, one of my nieces is, is Patricia. And for some reason, when she was born, her aunties, who love her dearly, started to call her Patty Pat. And not surprising to me, at least, now 12 years old, Patricia, is asking her aunties very politely, could she be known either as Patricia or, at the very worst, Patry? Yeah, we might say things, we might associate it with love, but it means different things to different people. Now, that's names. Now, what about characters from books? Yes, books, sorry, not book, books. What about characters from books? When we read them, I don't know about you, but I think I and many people, we start to build up a, a mental picture of the, the, the key people in the stories. And then sometimes when the book is, is dramatized on TV or in a film, you get an awful shock when you see the person who is um, portrayed the one that we had a very different picture of. And it can work the other way around. You know, uh, Miss Elizabeth Bennet, for example. You know, Miss Elizabeth has been portrayed so many times on TV and on films, and every character, of course, every real person character, of course draws out a slightly different, inter their interpretation. So, it's inevitable that we're drawing interpretations and making characterizations, but that can work for good and for ill, because it can cloud our full understanding. And that's what happened today in our Holy Gospel reading. There was Jesus. He suddenly said, I am. Now, as I said last week, that had profound absolutely profound implications. Jesus was saying he was God. I am. The two words which in Aramaic mean only one thing. God is speaking. From the burning bush through to the discourse following the feeding of the 5,000. It could only mean one thing. Now, why is that important? Because the people of the Jewish faith over the years had never seen God. They'd read about him just as we read about people like Miss Elizabeth Bennet or uh, Poirot, Inspector Morse. And they developed a mental picture. This was the one who was going to come and set them free from tyranny and oppression. And I think they'd probably got an impression of a warrior god. One who would lead them in the great fight. The fight for freedom. It started pretty well. 
you know, 5,000 of them turned up and there was only a few scraps of food and the king fed them and so they started to think yeah, maybe this is the prophet maybe this is the holy one and so they trekked across the lake or they walked around the lake to get to the other side to find out more about this one and there he declared because they asked him who he was and he said, I am and they suddenly saw that if this was the king, it was nothing like their mental image. They saw him through human eyes. They saw him as a human. And that's why they said, isn't that Jesus? His dad's Joseph. He worked in the carpenter shop. And he's saying, I am their mental picture of Jesus and their mental picture of the Son of God were poles apart. And they had an impossible challenge to try and reconcile the two. It was like putting the same ends of a magnet together. They repelled. They were seeing, remember last week I referred to the Joan Osborne song, that God was one of us. They couldn't see it. You know, just a slob on the bus. They couldn't see it. They couldn't accept it. The word became flesh. John gave them the clue. So the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And I think they saw a sort of a, a film star type of God. Yes, who could walk on water, but who hadn't grown up with them in Nazareth who hadn't toiled in the carpenter's shop and almost certainly would have scars on his hands unless he was, well, probably you were incredibly dexterous, Lord, but maybe you did get one or two scars on his fingers. We don't know. And does it matter? What is important is the word did indeed become flesh and dwelt among us. And so we're getting into an incredible challenge here we're getting almost a, it's almost a dual personality. God as man and God as the perception that we have. And a perception which may not be wrong. Our problem is that as humans, we almost inevitably see with human eyes. And sometimes, when something is so profound, that's where faith kicks in. We have to accept that as mortals, as humans, we cannot avoid seeing Jesus as the son of Joseph, for example. But in faith, we have also to be able to accept that that son of Joseph is the son of God. It's a clear message, but it's not a simple message. And Paul actually helps us in the epistle reading this morning. He talks about living a Christian life. Living a life where we can't help but think of the humanity of Jesus at the same time as accepting that he is the Son of God. And he says, Paul, so I'm, paraphrase, I'm going to paraphrase Paul. He says, yeah, don't, don't pretend that you're never going to get angry. It could be a fallacy. It'll just bottle up inside you and it'll make poison inside you and it'll pollute you. Yes, be angry. But turn the anger into a positive way. If you've been doing wrong, he said, if you've been stealing, of course you must stop stealing. Pay the price and then serve God. He gives very positive examples of positive action. So, not just negative abstinence. Yeah, I, 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 I've told you before about the, uh, the steward at the church in my home village whose glass was always half empty. 
and when the, uh, the young family came and tried to liven up the church family and made the most incredible social evening in the church hall. I remember it was fantastic. And as soon as he possibly could, he got up on the stage and said, well, all good things must come to an end and sent us all off home. Yeah, you know, that's negative abstinence. What God asks of us and what Paul is, uh, is commending to us is get away from negative abstinence. You know, at some stage, we are going to have to bite the bullet and say, when is it safe for us to sing hymns? When is it safe to restart our social activities? It would be easy to stay in negative abstinence forever, but at some stage we're going to have to decide. In prayer, in faith, we're going to do a little bit more. That's just an example. It works in our lives as well, in everything that we do. Positive action overcoming negative abstinence. We're not perfect. We cannot understand the full significance of I am. Only God can. And God is in three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We can only understand partially. And we can use that partial understanding to either say, well, it's impossible, I give up, like a a tough jigsaw or a cryptic password, you can say, oh, this is too much, let it go. Or, we can say we'll never understand properly, but we'll keep on trying, we'll keep on doing. Yes, we will get angry. Yes, sometimes we will be disappointed, but we'll still keep going. Finish where we started. Yes, I'm Bill Barker's lad. I'm also very proud to be the vicar of all saints. And I don't mind being referred to as that. Vicar, parson, John, call me what you will. It's not important. What is important is what we are. And if we are, that might mean that we are associated with something. Yeah. Last parish they called me the running vicar, running rector actually, because I was rector there and it all, it, it all went together and they, they just got used to, you know, morning rector, morning rector, and I, going down the street. Point of that, it doesn't matter whether you're Bill Barker's lad, whether you're the running rector, whether you're John, doesn't matter, it's what we are. And what we are can either be negative or positive. The Jews chose to see the negative. Paul commends us to go for the positive. I commend you, go for the positive. Yes, it was Jesus, the son of Joseph. It was also Jesus, I am the son of God. Amen. And now I ask you to stand and we can profess our faith in Almighty God. The words of the Creed. We can say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And Philippa, I think it is, is going to lead us in our prayers this morning. Lord, giver of all that is good, we thank you for the gift of the bread of life to sustain us in all we do. May we use your gift wisely. 
we are delighted to welcome Theo, Peter, Bedier Blake, and Freya Eve Campbell, christened here yesterday, into your family, and pray they will grow up secure in the knowledge of your boundless love. We ask you to bless Michael and Haley, who were married here yesterday. May they, may they know the joy of your love throughout their lives. We pray for the guidance of your Holy Spirit to lead them and us into a richer and deeper faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those who are waiting exam results and those who have known both success and failure during the Olympic Games. May they know that you are their rock, whether they face joy or disappointment, and that your love never falters. We pray for those who are on holiday, that they may travel safely and return refreshed and ready to serve you. We also remember those who will not be able to have a holiday this summer, and we ask you that they too will know renewal in their lives. We give thanks for the fellowship we enjoy at All Saints, for the ministry of John, and the support he receives from our church wardens. Strengthen all your church in the service of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. As our lives become less restricted, we think about the effects the pandemic pandemic has had on so many of us. We pray for those still afraid to go outside, for those coping with loss of employment, bereavement, loneliness, ill health and anxiety. We thank you for all who have gone out of their way to provide support, a listening ear, hope. All those who have worked tirelessly through, throughout the pandemic to ensure that life goes on as normally as possible. We ask you to comfort and strengthen all those in special need, the lonely, the homeless, the unemployed, victims of oppression, and those who are struggling with debt. We ask you to be with those fighting the flames in Greece at this time. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all those on our prayer list, and in a moment of silence, we remember those known only to ourselves. We bring before you all those who have died recently and those who mourn their loss, especially the family and friends of Marjorie Page. Comfort them and strengthen them with the knowledge of your love. Lord, we pray for those whom we have loved and see no longer grant them your peace. We hold them in our hearts, knowing that you, Lord, hold them in yours. Lord, in your mercy, we place our own concerns, our hopes and fears, our plans and problems before you, and ask you to be with us in the coming week, to guide us and to strengthen us. Loving Father, Help us to find your love in every moment of our lives and help us to share this love in our actions as well as our words. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet now in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let's wave each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. And those of you at home, peace be with you also from the people of all saints. Well, you are the people of all saints, but from those in church. And now we've prepared the table for the Eucharist.
God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life. Make us branches of the true vine. Amen. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him, you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him, you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. <coughs> Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. The body and blood of Christ our Lord. If you remain in your seats, in a moment I will mask and will bring the Eucharist in one kind to you as you sit. If you don't wish to take the Eucharist, cross your arms and I'll give you a blessing. Those of you who are worshipping at home, I commend to you the prayer of the act of spiritual communion.
Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray together. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. Now, the choir will sing our closing hymn. Fill your hearts with joy and love. of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with those who you love, wherever they may be, today and always. Amen. Amen. number of thank yous to make today. First one is thank you to all of you for, for being here this morning. Those here in church and those of you following us on our Facebook feed. Thanks next to Derek and the choir with the empty seat. Uh, if you notice we were a little bit different today. Derek is standing in. It's his first time he's led us on a uh, Sunday morning. Derek, we thank you for standing in while Daya is away. And then, there's been lots happening in the church this week. Uh, we... Wednesday outside the church, the green team made a start on uh, the never-ending battle of uh, keeping in control of the churchyard. We even made a start, or Maggie did principally, on reclaiming the forest, the jungle that is the west end of the church. Uh, our plan is to continue to meet on Wednesday mornings, uh, and any help will be gratefully received. Uh, we meet around 9.30, there is a Eucharist at 10.30 for anybody who wants to take a break and come into church and worship, and then we have a coffee around after the end of the service and continue a little while longer. So everybody is welcome. It's called the Green Team, and it's a team that has open membership. And Dave joined us last week, and it's great to have you as part of the Green Team, Dave. And there's still vacancies, so if you've got time on Wednesday morning, please do come and join. Uh, as Philippa mentioned in the prayers, yesterday we had two baptisms and a wedding. It wasn't four weddings and a funeral. It felt like it was the evening for me when I, when I made it finally back to the vicarage. It was wonderful to receive two new members officially into our church 
and um, three more baptism bookings resulted from that double baptism. So the work of God is alive and well in all saints, and it's bringing new people to us. Welcome to you. Uh, Denise, I know by name, Denise, is, Denise found us through Facebook worship and is joining us now in the congregation. So welcome, Denise. I'm sorry, I don't know your names yet, but you're very welcome. Great to see you here. Uh, this coming week, of course, we have the um, sadness and, and celebration. Marjorie had a wonderful life and she was starting to suffer. So we have our chance to give thanks to God on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, for the life of Marjorie and be with her family. Here in church at 2.30, Stephen and his sisters have said they really will be happy if anybody from the Old Saints family who wants to be uh, at the service will come and join. So that's 2.30 on Wednesday afternoon if you'd like to join and uh, then uh, tea and biscuit, tea and cakes I think it is. Yeah, come to the cakes if for nothing else. No, come for Marjorie. There'll be tea and cakes in the church hall after. <coughs> That's about it, apart from that we'll be worshipping God as well as uh, hopefully cutting the grass on Wednesday morning and then there'll be Eucharist uh, next Sunday. So, whatever you're going to be doing this week in this holiday season, typical English holiday weather, whatever you're going to be doing, wherever you're going to be, you might even see me out on the streets of the parish preparing for the marathon which your sponsorship will be most gratefully received for. What are you going to do? Where are you going to be? Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.